Welcome back to another video, and by another, I probably mean the first video you're actually watching because the channel has gained about 3,000 subscribers since my last video. Super exciting, but Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name Jeremiah. I'm a self-taught software engineer, and I make videos about my journey as a developer and as a human. I'm not sure if you could tell by the uh, the title, the nonchalant code in the background and the glasses, but this is a tech video. Today, we're actually going to be coding, uh, first time on the channel, going over some topics at a very high level. So. Stay tuned. My YouTube workflow, what what even is that? Let me let me explain. So I'm a YouTuber, this is on YouTube. I do something that's very common in the YouTube community is just updating your bio with your latest video. But I do this every single time I make a new video. So my workflow looks like I go to YouTube and I get my latest link for the video. Then I open up Instagram, update the bio there. Then I open up Twitter and I update the bio there. And then that's it. By the end of the video, we're gonna automate the process and it's gonna look a little bit like this. Is it, is it playing? Is it over with? How long does it take? Wow, how exciting. Technology go crazy. Okay, that's not too much work, but we can automate it. Let's let's get it done. All right, so I think we have a grasp on my problem and what we're actually trying to automate. So let's uh, let's write some code to make the computer do that for me. Disclaimer, disclaimer real quick, don't roast me in the comments. This is my first Python script I've ever written. So that's gonna be fun. We're gonna be using Python by the way. Okay, before even putting hands on the keyboard and writing some code, let's break out my game plan for how we're gonna attack this problem. Step one, I'm gonna need that data, my data from YouTube. So I'm probably gonna need to ask their API so I can have my latest video link. Two, we're gonna need to put all of my login credentials and keys in a separate folder so that you guys can't see them and steal my stuff. I don't trust you guys. All right, then keep your secrets. And three, I know for a fact that someone has written code already in something called a library that opens up a browser and allows us to click on something. So I want to understand and use that library in our project. All right, once again, I'm a YouTuber. I make YouTube videos and my data is somewhere in the YouTube realm and I need it. But I can't just go to YouTube.com. I got to interact with something called an API, which is a interface program. App application programming interface, I always forget that. An API basically stores my raw data and lets me interact with it and pull from it in a way that computers understand. So let's go over to YouTube's API and see if I can't get my data. Here we go. Yeah, I'd like uh, my like one data, please. Just my, my data, if you don't mind. Identify your, who are, who is this guy? What do you mean? You know me, I'm, obviously I'm Jeremiah. You're, you're who? Jeremiah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know you. I don't, how would I know that? How? I'm not a robot. So what I need you to do is to go sign up with a developer account, get an API key, and then we can and then we can talk. Until then, all right, cool, cool, fine, fine, I'll be back. The YouTube API is being kind of a tool bag right now. They want me to verify myself as a developer, so let's go do that. It should take like three minutes. I signed up with the YouTube API developer account, and they gave me an API key, which is like my unique password, so that I can get my data and prove that I am not a robot when I make requests. All right, I'm all signed up, so let's go back to the API, and hopefully they're a little nicer to me this time. All right, API, I'm back. Uh, they gave me this key. Uh, we good? Jeremiah, my guy, <laughs> what's up? What can I do for you? Yeah, I'm just gonna need the data from my last video so I can automate my YouTube workflow. Dude, that sounds incredibly fun and educational, huh? What's your, uh, what's your channel name? Yeah, it's just gonna be Jeremiah Peoples, spelled exactly how it sounds. That's a strong channel name right there. It's a strong channel name. Let me, let me see what I got. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Here's your JSON data. And make sure those guys subscribe to you, huh? Here's that conversation with the API, but written in Python. I'm going to be using a library called request to help me get the data. A library is code that someone else wrote, but they made that information and that code public to help other developers out in their development. So we're going to be using this library and one other one called Selenium. If you notice the API giving back a JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. All right, pretend I'm a JSON for a second. JSON and I want to get the color of my fingernail. Here's how I would do it. To get my fingernail color, which is the default fingernail color clear. Jeremiah.body dot arm dot hand dot finger dot fingernail color, which is gonna return to me clear or default, whatever. We're gonna do the same exact thing with the JSON that the API gave me to get my channel ID. And then once we have that channel ID, I'm gonna slap youtube.com in front of it. It was a little bit like this. I'm gonna save that link in a variable so that I can update my bios with that link. And boom, step one is done. Just like that, we are already 33.33% done with this project. The project's only like 
like 70 lines total. So that's how I say we're doing pretty good here. And all right, we got that all knocked out. Now on to the fun part, the meat and potatoes, if you will, the opening and the closing and the inputting of information and in the application. So let's get it. Now, once again, we're gonna be using code that someone else wrote to help us out with this. And that code is in a library called Selenium. From Selenium, we don't need the whole thing, so we're not gonna import star. We're going to import WebDriver. That's the only part of a Selenium that I care about because that's the part that's gonna allow us to open up and click on stuff programmatically. Basically, all I had to do was install WebDriver from Chrome and make a variable called driver and point to it. So ours is gonna be called driver. So we want this code to be super dry, bone dry, Sahara dry, desert dry. By that, it means don't repeat yourself. Don't rewrite the same line of code multiple different times if you don't have to make a reusable function. Whenever I'm trying to decide, do I actually need a function here? I always follow the one, two refactor principle. You write code one time, okay. You write the same exact code a second time, eh. but you need that same exact code a third time. You need to refactor it into a reusable function, which we're gonna do right now ahead of time, because I know for a fact we're gonna be clicking multiple different buttons throughout this project. Ooh. <sighs> So even before even writing a functions, I go into a function with a game plan. So let's describe the function for inputting text, i.e. how we're gonna log in. We're gonna need to find the input box to put the text, and then we're gonna have to give some text to write in the input box. Simple enough. Ooh, and one more thing before I forget. If there's text already in a box, like in my bio, there's already gonna be a link present. Let's clear that out if there's stuff in there before we send in our new text. Through Selenium's WebDriver, there's a ton of different ways to find elements. I'm just gonna pick XPath because it makes the most sense to me. XPath is basically what div is inside of another div. To get that XPath, you don't have to use XPath if you don't want to. You can use CSS selectors, IDs, or text values, but I'm just gonna use XPath. And to get that, you just need to right click on the application you're using, target the node, and then right click again, and then scroll down to copy full XPath. Now to keep this function dynamic, I want to be able to on the fly change what element we're looking at and what text I want to send. So we're going to make parameters, which basically act as parameters, which basically act as dummy data. The actual values of those won't be used until we actually call the function. That sounded complex. You'll see it when we implement it. Pretty straightforward. The next function we're gonna do is click button. It's just gonna click a button that we point it to. We're gonna use WebDriver to find the element we wanna click on based off that real XPath, and then we're gonna click that element. And here's the code for that. Again, we want this function to be dynamic as well, so we're gonna pass in a dummy XPath or CSS selector, whatever you wanna use. So now we're pretty set up and it's smooth sailing from here on out. All we gotta do is use those two functions that we just made to input text and to click on stuff, and we're golden. The annoying part, which is gonna be having to find each XPath by hand, that's gonna take about five minutes. So let's go ahead and do that. Another friendly reminder, all of my credentials and passwords are stored in a separate folder called credentials and I imported those. So I'm just gonna use the variables in place of them. So if you're confused or wondering where variables are coming from, it's probably my credentials folder. I kept getting this error to where you couldn't find the element and I was like, why not? So I paid pretty close attention to what was happening with the actual program when it ran and it looked like it was taking some time to load. Now I'm gonna do something super dirty, but we'll come back to it next time. I'm gonna hard code a time for the application to pause so that it gives enough time for the web page to load and we'll get back to why that's nasty at the end of the video. So it looks like we're about done. Let's give it a, a test to make sure it works on the Instagram side before doing the same thing on Twitter. Wow, that Jeremiah's guy is so good. It ran on the first try. He definitely didn't need to go back and edit it.
All right, looks like it's working, so let's do the same thing on Twitter. Pro tip, Twitter prefers your Twitter username over your email. I guess they think that their username is more secure. So use your username so you don't get flagged for weird activity on your account as much. And boom, success, we're done. It only took like 60 lines, that's Pretty nice, a pretty smooth program. It was definitely fun as my first Python script, so that was fun. But now let's loop back to why that time, that hard-coded value of two seconds or three seconds is so disgusting. We call that hard-coding a value, and whenever you hard-code a value, we leave ourselves open to having our application crash if the application takes 3.5 seconds to load and we said that we were waiting three seconds. So in JavaScript, you do an async await, which basically allows you to wait for something to happen. I think Python has the same thing. I looked it up earlier. It's like wait until element is clickable and then you can click on it. So I'm going to go back and refactor this after this video and put that in there. So hopefully when I publish this code, the wait until is included. So yeah, learn from my mistakes. Don't write hard code if you can help it. Try to make your applications as dynamic as possible, i.e. by including something like a wait or wait until. If you are automating your workflow or something with um, Selenium and Python, let me know what you're automating in the comments below. I'm really curious to what other people are doing with this technology. Uh, yeah. All right, and that's the video. This, again, this is my first Python script. So let me know if I did anything disgusting to you Pythoners. Typically, I write in JavaScript, so I had to look up, is it okay to write camel case? Apparently not. Apparently you guys do snake case. Anyway, again, thank you for watching this video so much. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video, leave a comment. And like always, I will see you on the next one with better quality because my camera's coming in the mail any day now.